Thank you to those of you, again, that participated by submitting your questions for this week's Q&A. Reminder, part one came out on Monday, and that video is available on the channel. So if your questions aren't answered in this video, they may have been answered in the previous one or may just not have been able to be answered this time. But make sure you check that one out as well after you watch this one. Uh, also a reminder, you want to ask, ask questions for future Q&As, uh, follow the show on Twitter, and if you would, smash that subscribe button. It helps the channel out. Let's go ahead and get started. HReview73 asks, if you could spend a day with one wrestler from every era of WWF slash E, who would it be and why? Beginning of her career, Trish Stratus, because I'm trying to get her pregnant. And Jade Cargill ain't in WWE, so I gotta go with her. I'd say Naomi, but eh. Eh. Nah, Trish, that, that love rolls back deeper. That crush rolls back deeper. And I can actually maybe have a chance to finally say that I had sex with a white girl. Ooh, yeah. So it would have to be her. Might not be the answer you expected, but if you really think about it, it totally is within the wheelhouse of what you would expect me to say. Which is probably why you asked it. It would be Attitude Era Trish Stratus all freaking day. Oh, God. Paulie underscore Paul 412. Jeff Hardy versus Jimmy Uso in a DUI on a pole match. Who wins? <laughs> um, <laughs> other drivers on the road because if those two are wrestling in a DUI on a pole match, that means they're not behind the wheel inebriated. So drivers, especially drivers in Carolinas and Florida, <laughs> they all win. Tones get straight. Who do you see WWE building as their next megastar, if any? Only young talent who would you choose if you had the book? I actually need to pay a little more attention to this because I'm starting to think about it like, who's that next generation? Maybe it is somebody like a Gable Stevenson who they just signed. Maybe that is one of those guys you point to for the future. You know, maybe it's a uh, Rick Steiner's son. Like, I, I, I admittedly, I am out. I'm not as engaged with it as I should be in looking at it. So you guys are certainly welcome to comment in the comments like, who do you think could be WWE's next franchise player? Not somebody that's already on the main roster, mind you, but somebody as you look to the future, they'll go through NXT and this company will get behind them, give them the rocket ship and give them the platform and opportunity, prop them up into that spot. Who's that going to be? I don't know what the answer is for me right now, but I'll start taking a deeper look at that and see who it could be. EJ Dennis 96. Rock versus Austin at Mania 15 or Mania 19? Which one was the better match in your opinion? 15, 19 was stupid. It should have main evented, it didn't. We know why it didn't. But oh, whoopee, Rock wins. It's too fucking late now, it doesn't matter. But Mania 15 and the build up to that? Yeah, give me Mania 15 match all day long. Canadian C273. It seems like Cena's most successful feuds were against people his polar opposites, such as Edge, CM Punk. Why is that? Because there's a clear contrast. Now, that's not just for Cena. You could say that about a lot of people. Like, somebody that's different from him represents different. It's naturally the dynamics are going to more closely fit than somebody that is very similar or the same. Um, you know, it probably also helps that you know, CM Punk was a really good talent and Edge was a fantastic talent who was versatile and could do a lot of things. So the reason some of his best feuds were against guys like that is because of the quality of his dance partner. Those guys were really damn good or great at what they did. It's going to make what Cena does look better. Conform 1984. Do you listen to the Jim Cornette podcasts? If so, do you tend to agree with him? I do not listen to the Jim Cornette podcast. Every once in a blue moon, and I emphasize every once in a blue moon, when I'm on YouTube, I might see like a little clip that has been uploaded, but that might come as a result of me watching something else. You know what I mean? I don't go out and seek it out. I do not listen to his podcast. I do not listen to anybody else's wrestling-related podcast. Do I tend to agree with them? You know, I see plenty of comments talking about how I try to come from the Cornette school, blah, 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 blah. No, I don't always tend to agree with them. There are certainly times I think that we are aligned in terms of mentality and mindset and approach, but there are times where I think he's a fucking idiot too. 
and it will tell them the same. I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. So, you know, you can agree with some things and disagree with other things. Uh, the one thing I don't like about Jim Cornette is he's always got an excuse, a justification, a rationale, a reason for everything that he did that wasn't his fucking fault. Even when you look at the NWA crap from what was that a year or two ago with the chicken joke, um, you know, it was dumb. Had he said it before? Yes. Is it something that should have been said? Yes. He should have taken responsibility for that. And then we could have also pointed out, like, how the hell did Dave Lagana let that go through? Like, how come those guys aren't in the same type of heat? Yes, Cornette's the one that said it, but this was a fucking recorded show, and yet they let it freaking air. Why the hell is all the heat falling on this guy? It's like the Max Caster thing. Like, you could talk about the lyrics of his rap that got him suspended, but who the fuck let this tape shit air? And they got no accountability, no blowback for that? We're only punishing people because of the reaction, and we're still not punishing all of the applicable and appropriate parties for the action. Um, so no, like I, I really don't watch anybody else's stuff, nor do I listen to anybody else's stuff. I might catch little, very little clips here and there of like Conan and Disco or Cornette or others, just because I'm perusing YouTube or perusing the internet or somebody might post a, um, a link to a video or a soundbite or something that's in a wrestling websites article, something like that. Uh, Trinell underscore Sally, would you be okay with Punk getting the title from Omega, then have MJF get it from Punk? No. They're going down the Omega Danielson route, as they should. Hurry up and get that strap off of fucking Omega and put it on Danielson. Punk should either be trying to go after Danielson or figure out how you could put MJF into that title picture to take it from Danielson so then CM Punk comes after it or then... Maybe a hangman page comes back and takes it back. And there's a lot of different things that you could do. Then maybe a CM Punk takes it off a hangman page and then MJF is coming after CM Punk. Like inevitably in the next six months to a year, you've got to get to MJF versus CM Punk. Um, but you got to do it right. Joel underscore Wayne, when the dirt sheets were reporting about Seamus and God being gym buddies, do you think they should have filmed some backstage segments with the two of them working out together? Yeah, as long as Pat Patterson wasn't around, because then him and Vince would be talking about, yeah, what we do here is uh, you rub the body oil all over each other, and then you get into towel fights in the gym. And the, the. Um, oh, fuck, they should have done all types of stuff. Like, even shown him at the restaurant, eating breakfast. Maybe they're doing it in a Waffle House. You know, like, you could do any number of things with that. But yes, they should have played that up. They literally should have done a Breakfast Club faction. That way you could take all the fucking egomaniacs, the Hunters and Ortons and Cena's and Sheamus's put them all in one faction and then you got to build up others to go up against them and that could have been a way you could have created another generation of stars. Put all the top guys together in one group so that way they can only hog up but so much of the spotlight and you've got forces you to showcase other dudes. Jay Abreu 9, in your opinion, what's the best finisher of all time? The surprise roll-up or the surprise Marlboro Mafia attack? <laughs> Repelling over the edge, 1999. What? Too soon? <laughs> Marlboro Mafia attack was a pretty good one, too. <laughs> Why? Bang, bang. Because Dino Bravo, he's dead. I am Dan02. What are your thoughts on the Ruthless Aggression Era? Some people think it's the greatest era in wrestling, while other people like myself believe the Ruthless Aggression Era is a little bit overrated. I tend to agree with two schools of thought. Is that the Ruthless Aggression Era had, had plenty of good things going on it, but it was certainly a time where my interest started to wane, at least slightly. Um, and I do think at times it is a little overrated. I really do. There was still a lot of really good talent at the time, but it wasn't the same. Um, but certainly a lot better than what we have now. But I do think it is a little overrated, yes. Bad underscore wrestling. Do you think there is an age problem in WWE in terms of the age of the wrestling? Yes, I do. I think AEW's got a similar problem. And it's not just me, like, having fun. And God forbid the AEW fucks have any fun when I'm like, yeah, you got to push those young guys like that 50-year-old Jericho and that. 49-year-old Big Show and 47-year-old Christian Cage. Let's get Sting, 61, into the Bound for Glory main event against CM Punk, damn it. And we still need to do that, damn it.
Well, we got to push all these young, hungry lions. See, clearly I'm being tongue-in-cheek, and I'm being smart, sarcastic, and smarmy, and a jackass for a variety of reasons. Some valid, and some just for the fuck all of it, to have some fun, God forbid. Um, but there is an age problem with wrestling. Because a lot of these dudes that are featured in prominent spots right now aren't exactly the youngest. So... It doesn't mean that guys in their late 30s, early to mid 40s still can't perform and can't perform at a high level. No, they absolutely can. But you have to realize with all those guys that they're probably likely closer to the end of their career than to the beginning of it. You'd rather have guys in their mid to late 20s that you could have around for 8 to 10 years versus the guys that are already in their mid 40s or mid 30s, late 30s, early 40s where they maybe only have two, three, five years left of true top level all the time performance. So yeah, I think I think they do have an age problem. And it's not just a WWE problem, it's a wrestling problem as a whole. Rosario 24, should we just stop wrestling or does it stop watching wrestling or does this shit ever get good again? Uh I don't know if I would ever stop entirely watching wrestling just because there are always there's always something that I can like. But the level with which I might watch or be interested in in future years might continue to go down more and more. Um but you have to make your own choices of what is the best use of your time. Troy the Gamer Nerd HD. Fuck Mary Kill. 90s Jacqueline, Naomi, Jade Cargill. This is easy. Fuck Naomi, marry Jade Cargill, and kill 90s Jacqueline. I don't need something that's already been with the Memphis mid-card piece of crap. A poor Shankar is going to close this out by asking, <laughs> Should Stephanie not allow God a God? To put it in the butt anymore, since it clearly gets as hot a racing. I don't know. I mean, for all you know, he could have had an issue because he wasn't getting the regular exercise from going to Brown Town. Or maybe, like, at his advancing years, like, it's causing more strain and stress to be able to keep it up to go into Brown Town, and as a result, like, it caused issues. Like, I he's being a jerk and a smart ass here, but. <laughs> Jerk questions get jerk answers. <laughs> <Yeah, burr. laughs> this question's fantastic. <laughs> but I, I'm sure once Hunter is healthy and back at it again, he's going right back to Brown Town. You know he is. Milk, milk, lemonade around the corner, fudge is made. Hooray! Ugh! <laughs> oh, just bad. But, anyways, thanks to you guys that. Submitted your questions. As a reminder, go check out the one that I uploaded Monday that had more questions answered there. I enjoyed this round of Q&As. We've got some different types of questions, some unique questions. I like this more. Let's keep this up going in the future. I have other content up on the channel throughout the week. Just remember, OTR Central, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.